on Worcester News tonight, a stand against racism. A central mass organization is raising awareness on inequality. Plus, a man with ties to central Massachusetts is cheering on the Celtics as they go into game six tonight in a unique way. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Anna Botari. Standing up for equality. It's the mission behind the YWCA's Stand Against Racism. Thursday, the organization hosting a forum to raise awareness on the negative impacts of institutional and structural racism. Our Cam Jandro joins us now live with the details. Cam? On a stand against racism has become one of the YWCA's signature events. They say, while some may not notice it, racism continues to be a major issue across the United States. Carmen Perez is Mexican American, and she admits her life can sometimes be difficult. She grew up in Southern California and says racism was just something she had to deal with. I was told to go back to Mexico even though I was not from there. Um, and so I grew up with a target on our backs, um, being part indigenous, being part Mexican. At age 17, she became an activist for civil rights issues. Perez co-chaired the 2017 Women's March, which saw more than 5 million people protest inequality. It's why she joined the YWCA of Central Massachusetts Thursday to take a stand against racism. She spoke as the event's keynote speaker, touching on the effects of racism. It's really easy to turn your eye when it doesn't personally impact you. We need to stand up and even though it doesn't personally affect you or impact you, it ultimately does impact your community. Introducing Perez was Jesenia Calaco, a sophomore at Claremont Academy. Calaco's father is originally from Africa. She hopes Stand Against Racism opens the public's eyes. I'm still affected by the history of racism and slavery. Don't ignore it. If it bothers you, let them know, correct them. It's, it's something that shouldn't be around, but it is still present. So, Stand Against Racism is now in its sixth year. Perez and the YWCA want the event to bring the community together. We have been blessed because we have people here from every single part of the world. And let's embrace that. It makes us more richer as human beings. We have to suspend our first judgment and gather more information. And it's about building with one another outside of our differences. Now today's forum only kicked off. Stand Against Racism on Saturday afternoon. The YWCA will be hosting a community celebration at their Salem Square location. Anna. Thanks, Cam. A Douglas woman has been sentenced to four years in jail. According to the Telegram, 46-year-old Stacy Piercy was found guilty of driving as so to endanger and leaving the scene of an accident involving personal injury. In 2016, Piercy allegedly ran over two women with her car after having an argument. The incident left one of the women paralyzed permanently. Piercy was arrested after a police dog was able to track her down in the woods. She was given 90 days credit for time she spent before the trial began. A former inmate at the Worcester County House of Corrections faces a judge Thursday. Christian Cologne is charged with assault and battery on a corrections officer. And now video of the incident he posted on Facebook is getting a lot of attention. Our Rosalind Flaherty has the story. Christian Cologne appears in court for an assault and battery charge on a corrections officer at the Worcester County Jail. The former inmate says he remembers the incident much differently. I didn't attack the officer in any means. I didn't show any any aggressions towards the officer. And on top of that, there was three officers to one inmate. Cologne released this surveillance video from last June on social media. It shows him standing inside the jail facing three corrections officers. At this point, the officers say Cologne was refusing to go back in his cell. The video shows them taking him to the ground and a physical altercation follows. In my opinion, it was disgusting. It's something that no, nobody should go through, whether they're guilty, not guilty. Superintendent David Tuttle says what you don't see on the video is Cologne biting an officer and spitting at them. That's why they're struggling with him. He's resisting to being handcuffed. He's not following in orders to stop. Cologne says he was compliant and never bit the officer, but says he should have a right to defend himself. At that time, it's not it's not restraining. It's defend it's defensive mechanism where I have to protect my head. Meanwhile, Tuttle says the sheriff's office has reviewed the incident and they are confident the officers acted correctly. He says it wasn't the first time they had problems with Cologne. Mr. Cologne was biting them. He was causing harm to them. Uh, he was spitting on them, and uh, that's why they had to do what they did.
Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. A Worcester woman charged with defrauding the government of nearly $300,000 in a cash for food stamp scheme is sentenced to federal prison. According to the Telegram, Esther Aquay is the owner of Esther's Fashion Paradise on Main Street. Aquay admitted to participating in a scheme happening in the city for years. It involves retailers swapping cash for supplemental nutrition assistance program benefits. Aquay was sentenced to eight months in federal prison. New training and tactics have helped the city of Worcester decrease crime and homicides. According to the Worcester Police Department, 2017 was the first year in more than two decades without any fatal shootings. Our Chandler Walsh has the story. Worcester reported no shooting deaths in all of 2017. It's something the police department hasn't been able to say for a long time. I think that's outstanding to say that for a city our size. I mean, we, you look at other comparable cities just in New England alone, and they can't say that. There were 24 shootings in the city with 25 victims last year, but no fatalities. Sergeant Carrie Hazelhurst says the department has success with a mix of old school and modern day policing. They maintain a significant presence in the community and also use technology like their real time crime center connected to about a thousand cameras citywide. We just have uh, the technology today is just an enormous assist. But then the old school policing is on NRT offices going to the crime watch meetings and listen to the people. Michelle Flegel remembers her experience living in Worcester decades ago. You'd open the window we go, ah, the sweet music of, of summertime, there's a drive-by. And since moving back, she says she's noticed all the difference. You see mounted cops, you see bike cops, you see cops with all of the construction. That never used to happen. It's so wonderful. Ryan Fitzpatrick says no shooting deaths in the city gives him hope for his kids. Hopefully the kids will be safer and, uh, you know, don't have to worry about anything and you still have to be cautious, of course, but... You know, it's, uh, I think it's hopefully a step in the right direction. Chandler Walsh, Worcester News Tonight. The Celtics are taking on the Milwaukee Bucks tonight in game six of their first round playoff series. One man with ties to central Massachusetts is hoping to bring the team luck in a unique way. Charlie Cooper, also known as Onesie, is showing his love for Boston sports in a unique way. All right, so I wrote this rap song and then Kyrie Irving goes down for the playoffs. Get well soon, bud. The Southboro native is loyal to New England's favorite basketball team, even while living in New York. He produced this Celtics playoff wrap out of the East 18. Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Kyrie Irving, watch it, like it. Um, I don't think it's going to matter in terms of how you perform, but it, you know, it's a grown man in a onesie. You might as well get a laugh out of it. The YouTube video, which has more than 11,000 views, is not his first rap. He actually started to make videos for his full-time job selling software. I wrote a total joke rap for my company at the time for the product we were selling. <clears throat> and um, somebody got a hold of it. They played it at a sales meeting. And they told me, hey, here's, here's some money. Go turn this into a marketing video. After he realized people liked what they saw, he decided to talk sports and posted a video about the Patriots. First sports rap was 2016, before week one. Uh, Tom Brady was suspended for four games uh, for the whole Deflategate scandal. The success of that video ultimately led to his latest rap. It was kind of just a natural progression going from the Patriots. You know, once the fun died down in February after that, um, might as well hop on the bandwagon and make something about the Celtics, you know? Cooper says the year he wrote the rap about the Patriots, they won the Super Bowl, so he's hoping it'll bring some luck to the Seas. The annual Worcester Regional Research Bureau honors five public employees with 2018 Thomas S. Green Public Service Awards. The Green Awards recognize those who make outstanding contributions to public service and exhibit characteristics, including efficiency handling all assigned responsibilities, enthusiastic performance of tasks above and beyond the call of duty, and community involvement. Chairs of the awards, Ellen Gainley, says it's important to recognize those who help to improve our communities. When you think about what you look for, what makes a, a strong community, I think it's you know quality schools, you want your neighborhood safe, you want it clean, you want your roads pothole free and snow free. And interestingly enough, our, our honorees this evening represent public schools, public safety, and public work. So I 
Tonight was the 29th annual Green Awards presentation, which has honored 114 public servants over the past three decades. The Hanover Theater hosts its 10th anniversary Broadway preview party tonight to give a first look into the 2018-2019 Broadway series. President and CEO Troy Siebels says he's proud of the series and feels really good about the lineup. Some of the shows to come include The Wizard of Oz, Elf, and the audience even got a sneak preview of the upcoming musical Waitress with an appearance from actress Maisha McQueen. A story about a woman who um, works at a pie shop. She has two really great friends. She's in kind of an unfortunate situation with her marriage and she finds out at the very top of the show that she is pregnant and things just sort of unravel from there and we kind of see how she navigates through these circumstances to come out on the other side in a more positive way.